When Jack let me write a new comic book about the Jesuits, the original name was Out of the Shadows. Here is the original proposal for the cover. After that, I asked Jack to pose in the place of the Jesuit. He was a real trooper. But we didn't want people to get the wrong idea. So another person was placed in the Jesuit role. We thought of out of the shadows because that's how the Jesuits prefer to operate. Here's what happened to me back in 1982 as recorded in Why They Changed the Bible, One World Bible for One World Religion. The next summer, my mom and I had the opportunity to study intensive Spanish at the Universidad Cuanahuac in Cuernavaca, Morelos, Mexico. The course was taught completely in Spanish, and being thrown into a situation where almost no one spoke English anywhere for a month forced me to concentrate on my studies more intensely. On the last day of the course, my young instructor surprised me. He spoke English. I had no idea. He asked me about my Christian faith and then focused his questions on my beliefs about the Bible. Since I had barely been a repentant Christian a year, I had only read through the Bible once by that time. But having taken a couple Bible courses in my first semester at Pacific Christian College, I summarized Bible history the best I could. He proceeded to tell me my history was all wrong. Then he said something so outlandish about his view of Bible history that it didn't even stick in my memory from that day to this. But it was what he said next that astounded me. I am a Jesuit priest, he said, as we started out of the classroom for the last time. Then having gotten my attention, he said to me, We are not under the Pope. We run the Pope. What the Pope pronounces is only what the broad consensus of people agrees to. Then we tell the Pope what to say, and the Pope pronounces it as doctrine. I never saw him again, but I left Mexico with the Jesuits' words in my head and a bad case of Montezuma's revenge that plagued me for the next two years. History shows it doesn't take a lot of Jesuits to do the Catholics' dirty work. It only takes a few well-placed ones. This is quite similar to what was said by Jacinto Achilles' Jesuit friend about how the Pope makes his decisions. Quote, the theologians and the confessors then are really at the head of affairs. They're not the cardinal or the bishop. The Pope himself is subject to the same regulation. I smile when I hear the Pope's holding a secret consistory. The Romans believe that he is then actually himself engaged with his cardinals in the discussion of important matters, whereas the true secret consistory is held by the general of the Jesuits and his counselors, and it is by them that everything is discussed and decided. And this is not all they do out of the shadows. Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. That first day, Jacinto talked to his old professor, now a Jesuit priest. His Jesuit friend concluded with an intriguing statement. Quote, what I have told you respecting Rome, about how they learned so much at the confessionals, is equally true with regard to all other places, wherever we are to be found, in Naples, Turin, Genoa, Modena, Verona, or anywhere else. Look, for instance, at this little town of Tivoli. Not, no one stirs a foot but we are aware of it, and we have no occasion to go out of our houses for information. I myself have been here 
for seven years. I have never ascended the staircase of any house in the place, and yet I am well acquainted with the affairs of every family that resides here. What they are doing, what they are talking about, what their intentions are, even to the most minute matters, in proof of which the next time we are walking out together, ask any question of me respecting any person we may pl chance to meet, and you shall have copious information. If you remember the first two videos, Jacopo Leone found books filled with the private lives of everyone in the area. He understood how easy it was for a new Jesuit to read the books and know all he needed regarding any person, making him seem to be gifted with the prophetic spirit. Well, the very next day, Jacinto put his Jesuit friend to the test. Here it is from Jacinto's own writing. I can only put but small portions. You can always read the book for yourself. Quote, the next day we met again. My companion was accompanied by a youth who had, I believe, the charge of a school. He was also a Jesuit and on terms of strict intimacy with my friend. The Jesuit told Jacinto about how they do the thinking for the Pope, as I said above, and then this happened. At this moment, some ladies passed us, whom the Jesuits were first to salute by taking off their hats, but from the coolness with which the civility was acknowledged, I saw there was but little friendship between the parties. Can you tell me, I said to my friend, who these ladies are? <laughs> oh, yes, I can tell you not only their names, but their ages too, if you desire it. Have you ever been in company with them? <laughs> Never. But that does not prevent me from being able to furnish you with every minute particular in their biography. Whereupon he entered into so many details concerning the history of these ladies that I was astonished at the extent of his information. But I was still more surprised to hear the younger Jesuit contribute his share as well and even correct some points which the other had advanced. I had the curiosity to inquire how long this youth had been in Tivoli and discovered that he was a Pole and had only been six months in the place. A priest came by next, and respecting him, also we had a full and minute account. Afterwards, the Princess Santa Croce passed in her carriage. My two Jesuits made her a profound reverence, and the elder of them entertained me with the history of the lady till we reached home. Then the next day, Jacinto's Jesuit friend said this about the Roman officials. I know them all, both friends and enemies, if not personally, at least by reputation. And of every one of them I could, if you wished it, give you all the circumstances of their lives, from their birth to the present day. You may rest assured that a Jesuit, after ten years' experience, unless he chanced to be a stupid fellow, in which case he is soon expelled from the society, ought to know far more than the most expert and practiced officer of police. For my own part, I am conscious that I possess a certain dexterity in these matters, and it is on this account that I have been sent into various places and entrusted with so many commissions. I cannot, however, imagine why they've kept me seven years in Tivoli, doing nothing but what my office as professor of moral theology requires, and to, uh, to settle cases of conscience. Still, they have given me my degree, il grado, that's the Jesuit final vow, after which you may never be expelled from the Jesuits. And I imagine I shall shortly be called to Rome, to attend to other matters, to be one of the twelve who every morning at an early hour occupy the confessionals at the Jesu. 
Remember those 12 Jesuits who ascended the stairs at the Chiesa del Gesù every day to hear confessions? It was considered a very high Jesuit honor, and Jacinto's teacher had been granted that honor. He would be one of the most trusted Jesuits in Rome. These talks didn't go on forever. Eventually, this Jesuit was spotted talking with non-Jesuit Jacinto, and his superior stopped the public discussions and walks. But it didn't stop the private discussions, which continued on for a while. But at the point where Jacinto couldn't take it anymore and began to oppose the Roman Catholic system, all hell broke loose, almost literally. The Whore of Babylon sent him to the Inquisition more than once, but out of it, Jacinto became a saved, born-again Christian believer and began speaking publicly about the evils of his previous religion. And the Catholic system did what the Catholic system does. They made up accusations against him, claiming he had abused various young women. It seems to be a theme. The bad actors accuse the enemy of what they themselves are doing. Years later, after he had spoken publicly and boldly, including in Italy, Protestant trader John Newman renewed the accusations in writing against Jacinto Achille, which Newman had heard from his Catholic mentor, Cardinal Wiseman. That's the same Cardinal Wiseman who met Newman earlier in 1833, who told Newman that he had to betray England to the Pope if he wanted to be received as a Catholic. Jacinto quickly sued Newman for his libel. For his defense, to defend against the suit, Newman wrote to Wiseman, seeking whatever documentary evidence was available. Here's the creative way the Wikipedia article put its own spin on the story. Quote, Newman asked Wiseman for whatever documentary evidence he possessed. But Wiseman, unworldly at the best of times, was distracted by other matters, and could offer nothing." End quote. In other words, after all the slander for years against Chachinto, there was absolutely no documented evidence. Obviously, Newman lost the suit. He was fined the rough modern equivalent of over a million dollars. A Catholic fund paid those legal costs for Newman. Chachinto had gotten away with revealing the Jesuits' secrets for years and producing the book that this information came from, Dealings with the Inquisition or Papal Rome, Her Priests, and Her Jesuits in 1851. It's still available on archive.org, Google Books, and hopefully Amazon as well. But the Catholics never stopped accusing him. In 1853, he worked on translating the New Testament into Italian. Seven years later, Jacinto was accused of adultery. And suddenly this man, who kept going back to preach where the Catholics rejected him, disappeared. He was never seen anywhere, alive or dead, again. As Alberto Rivera both knew and experienced 137 years later, death can be the price of revealing Jesuit secrets. But thankfully... Both of them had eternal life by faith in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were absent from the body, but present with the Lord. And now we've got this permanent written record that so clearly illustrates the despicable dealings of the Jesuit arm of Satan's counterfeit church. That's enough for now about Jesuits in Italy. What was happening in England at this time? That will be in the next video. Until then, God bless you and have a wonderful day.